Well, welcome to another video. This one's a desk job. I'd love it to be a Land Rover vehicle job, but uh, the Land Rovers at the moment I've got to sit in the driveway. So do I. I'm just worn out. Anyway, this is a Raspberry Pi 5. Um, we hope to uh, make it into a server of sorts. Uh, and in the process, I'd like to make it run off PoE. So I found this Chinese PoE hat that also does M.2s. Um, if I'm really lucky, this little heat pipe heatsink will work on the M.2 if I can squeeze it underneath all the, the little connectors and stuff under here. Um, and I also have an industrial case we will see later. Um, but yes, I've already got this set up with um, ISP config, which is kind of like a free alternative to um, uh, cPanel. And uh, I've got like web hosting and I can probably do email and stuff on it. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yes, I have the config set up hopefully to run the ISP config off the SD card, which is a high speed Samsung, and uh, do the rest of the hosting off the NVMe. Um, anyway, we need to do some reassembly, so I will see you again in a few minutes once I have reassembled everything. And hopefully, this doesn't restrict the airflow on the fan too much. Anyway, we'll be back. Now, I've got the old uh, hat off. I'm not sure if this one is going to fit the same standoffs. I'll be happy if it does. Well, actually, it might. Now, we need to... The PoE power goes into that little slot down there. The rest of the header goes in there. I like that this passes it through. It's not going to sit completely flush, so I think I will need to change those uh, standoffs. All right. Okay, so I've got the other standoffs installed. Um, the same threads as the old one. One thing I like about the Victrinox Cyber Tool is this socket has got two steps in it to fit these kind of standoffs exactly. These are the same... Um, dimensions as uh, D-sub connector screws, which a lot of people probably don't see these days. Anyway, that should go in, and we'll, this should fit on here much more firmly now. Okay, we have the top screws in, we have our ribbon cable connected. Um, there's little um, insulating pads or sticky covers over the holes here. For stuff out of China, I wouldn't expect them to do that unless it was absolutely necessary. I'm guessing that's uh, short circuit prevention. So uh, we will look at um, putting the heatsink on this now and see what happens. So the first step I didn't know was if the bottom of this was going to fit under the SSD. That will. And there's a little bit of play in there. Um, so if I choose the thinnest, um, uh, what is it, thermal pad here, that might fit under there. Or I just don't bother about the bottom thermal pad and worry about the top one because that's where all the chips are. Okay, we got this on. Now the thermal pad, while well, you peel off the carrying tape is basically a strip of plastic with some heatsink paste on it, more or less. It's very crumbly stuff. The back plastic doesn't come off. So there's still a plastic layer in there. So direct metal on metal contact might even be better. Second thing, I've peeled the plastic off this and there's sticky stuff left behind. So probably won't affect its performance, but I'm going to clean it with some alcohol first before we put that on the top here. But that's going to go on relatively okay. Okay, so uh, we've got it nicely cleaned up. We'll see how we go. We can put that on. I will peel the um, protective layer off. Yep, and they've just pretty much put a smear of this thermal paste stuff on here. And there's a chunk of it just broken off there already. Anyway, um, so the bottom one, yes, I probably should have peeled the plastic layer off. No, I'm not going to do that. I don't think the direction in this makes any difference. I'm going to plonk you in there and you're going to put four screws in the side. All right, heat sink is screwed on. Um, not pushed down too hard, but enough to just make contact. This uh, SSD and testing really didn't get warm at all. Um, it's not getting used for super, super high data rates, and for what we're planning on doing with it, it's not going to really need anything like this. It would be fine without a heatsink, but it looks cool. So that's right. Now we have the PoE um, adapter on here, so I can plug that into the switch and make it fire up, which we'll do later. Um, I'm going to see how it goes in the case. And these headers I might use for some other stuff later on as well. Anyway, we're moving along nicely. Now it's time for the case. This case comes with a whole bunch of pieces. Now in the unboxing video, a whole bunch of things fell out. So including a bunch of standoffs of different sizes and shapes. Um, a funny little clip here, which I think is like a Pictini rail clip. Oh, it looks a bit like that. No, that's for switchboards. That's a switchboard mount. I guess this is designed to be an industrial case. 
and I put some of the bits inside and I packed it back in. So I have to undo some screws. This will require some modification to allow the heat sink to pop out the top. Alright, case is open. And spare mounting bracket is out on the screwdriver. Okay, so IO ports go that way. And this will slide in this way. And yep, we're going to have to cut a chunk out of that lid. That won't be too hard a job for a zip disc for the grinder. I'll just have to mark that carefully. Um, but we will look into what level of standoffs we want on here to make this fit the I.O. properly here. Um, which is going to be interesting until I make that slot. It's going to be interesting to work that out. Alright, we've got the four short standoffs on. I realise these slots have got a bigger gap so that you can put it at multiple heights in there. So I don't have to be too exact. I'll put the minimum standoffs for now. Okay, I'm back from the angle grinder. We did some modifications. Now it fits on with an open top. We have a uh, sunroof. We'll put this together. Okay, it is assembled. This is putting a tiny bit of pressure on that heat sink there. What I can probably do is take that off, loosen these screws and slide that heat sink along just a tiny little bit. Although, it looks like the bottom of that is hard up against the bottom of the connector there so at least it's probably not going to be putting mechanical force on the actual connection which is what I was worried about so I think we're going to be okay um, that shouldn't matter too much uh, we've put the short standoffs in all the IO lines up nicely and I was actually wrong there is a snap out here for other stuff but um, these actually line up you've got to use the short standoffs uh, all of these line up nicely but uh, hopefully all we'll need is that one connector all right i just noticed a little rubber thingy here this little bit here that's supposed to go over the reset button hole um i don't think i want to disassemble everything to put the little rubber thingy in when it's a reset button i basically never use i can poke that with something and to be honest i don't want to be shifting that around and bump it anyway so we'll leave that out all right moment of truth we're going to plug in a poe port see what happens see if we get a light of some kind heard the file there I've heard the um, oh, I see green light I see lights there we go and network PoE is working that is good news all right and we even have uh, logging on an SSH so we're doing good um, yeah that's about all I can do at this point all right checking the PoE current where toggling between about five and seven watts we're doing pretty well um it'll probably go up when we do a couple other things but it's playing 50 volts on poe so not bad all right time to put in the rack i fitted a couple of magnet fragments under here they should just magnet down it's easy to remove when i need to and um it sits above so that doesn't interfere and uh, i can see it clearly it doesn't float around and i can plug it into the port right there. Alright, so it looks a bit like a Frankenstein creation, but uh, it works. We have lights, we can log into it, operating as expected. So the next step will be to um, harass some people to uh, help me uh, configure it properly. But uh, yeah, we should have a new web server. Be looking good, and I'll do a pointing at it for the thumbnail. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one.